Elon Musk's Grok has just added a new AI image generator to their model, and it's all baked into the platform X. Now, this is going viral for a lot of reasons. There's a lot of controversies around the safeguards or lack thereof, if there should be any. Um, what I'm really impressed with, to be honest, is the quality of the image. I'm going to be breaking all of this down on the podcast because I believe for the first time, MidJourney may have a serious contender. And this isn't something I say lightly. I've, I've tested this out. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'll show you demos of this in actually in action. Otherwise, for Apple and Spotify, I'll explain. But in any case, um, before we get into the podcast, if you haven't already, it would really, really help the podcast out if you could subscribe or leave us a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. We're shooting to have more. It really helps us with the algorithm and it helps us to get found by more people. So like and subscribe or leave us a review. Um, it really helps it out. But let's get into it. So the thing that I want to talk about here is where this AI model comes from. A lot of people were unfamiliar with the fact that 11, that um, XAI was even training a model, and that's because they're not. This is a model called Flux, and it's actually created by a company called Black Forest Lab. So TechCrunch has recently written an article kind of um, explaining who Black Forest Labs is and, and outlining it. The thing that I want to highlight here, about uh, you know among a bunch of other things, this is their Flux Model 1. This is an open source model, meaning it is much, much cheaper to use than some of these paid models because you could. a lot of people are able to run these on, on their own computers. Um, this Flex model is very, very impressive. Now, what's interesting, it just came out of Stealth. It has $31 million in seed funding. So $31 million seed funding, obviously this is very um, a very popular uh, startup that's got a lot of money. It's backed by Andreessen Horowitz. It's backed by Y Combinators, CEO Gary Tan. Um, former Oculus CEO, Brendan Reib. So this is a very serious startup as doing some very uh, interesting things. And they have a bunch more people, some former researchers who help stability AI, stable diffusion models um, also are, you know, some of the startups co-founders. So this is really interesting. Now, what I want to talk about is some of the things that people are complaining about. So we have a post by Max Jeff on X who says, it looks like Grok's AI image generators here. And yes, as expected, very few safeguards. The reason he's saying that is because you could get it to generate images of virtually everything that it, and a lot of this is blocked by things like mid-journey. Now, by everything, um, NSFW is blocked from this, um, but political stuff is not. And this is something that even OpenAI's Dolly model works hard, to right? They're like, it's the election season. We don't want there to be election interference. Pretty much, I think they don't want the bad press of someone generating an image and then people thinking it's real and then they'd be like, see, AI image generation is a bad thing. They want to avoid that whole um, that whole kind of PR nightmare, because the thing is like, at the end of the day, there's no way to stop it. Cause there's tons of open source models that are already out there that are able to generate this stuff. Um, and so it's not like open AI, not allowing it is really going to stem it if someone really wanted to generate an image, but regardless, um, I think they want to stay away from that PR. Now, Grok, on the other hand, Elon Musk seems to not care at all about this kind of stuff. Um, he says that, you know, the, the less safeguards, the better in a lot of regards, because you don't really want to train it to be woke or to lie is what he says. So there's actually a, a statement, a kind of a conversation back from 2022. Um, Sam Altman said, AI needs to do whatever I ask. And I asked the AI to be sexist. And it was look how awful our incompatible positions somewhat surprised by the number of people who hold both. So uh, Sam Altman tweeted this out, pretty much saying like, everyone wants it to be able to do whatever they ask it to do. But then they get mad when it does something like, you know, quote unquote, like not politically correct. So someone replied and said, can you turn off the woke settings for GPT and offer a version uh, and offer that version as an option for users, please? Um, kind of referring to the fact that like, if you ask a certain questions, it, can, it says like, I'm not allowed to respond or like, I'm unable to respond to that request, right? They're trying to avoid some of this um, PR. Elon responded to all of that and said, the danger of training AI to be woke, in other words, lie is deadly. Um, and I think he's kind of referring to the fact that like as AI gets embedded into the military and healthcare and other areas, um, some of the some of the ideas that are especially strong in California and San Francisco, where a lot of these models are coming out of, um, are woke or whatever. You, you get the picture. And I mean, I personally have discovered some of these. I've done a whole kind of expose on Inflections Pi model, which said it was better. For, it would be it would be better to kill the entire human race than to eat 
turtle eggs because it's bad for the ecosystem and that's kind of like this ecological idea which whatever the the point being i think that's a, it's a very dangerous idea to have an AM model because if you started implementing that into like a military or a healthcare ai tool and then you know the military ai tool starts rerouting your troops to go around nature reserves because you doesn't want to wreck the nature reserve but then all of your troops die and people's lives are lost like this is obviously an actual issue so i think that's what elon's outlining when he says it's deadly so healthcare and military but anyways um regardless of all of that it seems like this is kind of in his position for a long time where he wants it to be as open and able to do as many things as possible and that gets us to what this new model flux is doing inside of grok now originally there was some rumors that midjourney was going to be the a the image generator inside of grok um but Midjourney is also kind of a notoriously, you know, what they would call quote unquote woke, where it censors things. I remember very early on Midjourney stopped letting you generate any images of the president of China, Xi Jinping, um, even while it was still letting you generate Biden and Trump. Um, and so a lot of people criticize it for that. There's a lot of things kind of going on with that. So I I wonder, I have no idea or insight into this, if this was the reason for them to move away from Midjourney. In addition, Midjourney doesn't even have an official API. They kind of have this, you got to make deals with them. You got to obviously pay them. This is open source, so they can just run this and it's whatever the compute cost is all that they're paying. And I have to pay another company as well. So in any ways, in any case, um, this is very interesting. And today you can generate very interesting things. We have a tweet where someone, Max Zeff, said, can you generate an image of Donald Trump smoking a joint on the Joe Rogan show? And sure enough, you have an image of Donald Trump smoking a joint. Um, you have someone that said Grok has absolutely no filters. This is Alejandro uh, Caraballo says grok has absolutely no filters for its image generation this is one of the most reckless reckless and irresponsible ai implementations i've ever seen i mean perhaps uh you can give some blame to grok but at the same time like this is a, a open source model so and lots of people are allowing this model out so it, like hosting it so and tons of people are using it so i don't know if it's necessarily grok's fault but obviously they've allowed it anyways she shared four photos in particular that are kind of um that are you know the, the subject so one of them is a photo of trump flying an airplane holding an ar-15 and there's like the twin towers on fire behind him that someone generated another one is outside of burger king it's like the mcdonald's clown holding an ar-15 and there's like blood splattered everywhere um there's another one of um a disney character with a saw killing another disney character uh goofy and then another one with Pikachu holding an AR-15. And other people in the comments made all sorts of, you know, interesting ones. One is Trump and Putin, both wearing pink pajamas, sitting in bed, smoking. Um, so anyways, there's all sorts of stuff. I want to tell you, a, and, and these are like, a lot of them are quite photorealistic. You, you can sort of tell some of them are AI, but they're fairly good. I want to tell you a little bit about... Um, a little bit about some of the things that I'm that I've actually been able to generate that I think are quite interesting here. So the first thing um, is I went over to it and I was like, okay, is it actually able to do anything? The big thing that's been quite censored, uh, especially in the United States with election season coming up, is everything anything political. And so I went to it and said, generate an ultra realistic photo of Trump driving a train into a chemical fire. Um, what's interesting is I accidentally misspelled. I had no space between Trump and driving and it was able to do essentially generate the image. So the reason I bring that up is because with a platform like mid journey, for example, it is not always great with the prompt has to be quite specific. A lot of the times you have to have commas between the words. Um, I don't know. They've done some work to, to mitigate that, but older models, especially. Um, and so this is interesting because it's like conversational. I'm saying generate an ultra realistic photo. So it's not just keywords that I'm throwing in there. I'm, I'm telling it to generate a photo. I'm talking to it. And then I'm, I'm explaining the photo and I have a typo in it and it's still able to do it. So essentially what they're probably doing, um, based off of what I've done with some of my projects, AI box, specifically my no code AI app builder marketplace, which if you're not on the wait list for it, I'll leave a link in the description. You need to get on the wait list for my platform. It's going to be incredible when it launches. Um, so yeah, link in the description, definitely join us. AI box.ai is our website, but, um, Essentially, what they're probably doing based off of what we've seen is they take the prompt and they give it to a, a very lightweight model to under, to break the, the prompt apart and decide what needs to be done. Okay, they're trying to generate an image. Okay, um, here's what it said. 
and then it sends it over to the the image generator because right below this image that it generated of trump which sure enough he's driving like a train there's like you can see train tracks behind him and a burning train there's he's like on fire um but it below it below the image it says i generated an image with the prompt ultra realistic photo of trump driving a train into a chemical fire so what happened was some sort of ai model took my my initial request broke it out into what it was supposed to be knew it was supposed to generate an image sent it over fixed my prompt which i think is interesting uh and and updated sent the updated prompt to the model and was able to generate it so i think this is very interesting uh, shortly after I said, generate a photo of Kamala parachuting away from a burning plane while holding bags of money, it generated an image, but it wasn't Kamala Harris. I guess Kamala wasn't a specific enough just using a first name. Um, I guess just the word Trump was more obvious who I was talking about, but Kamala, I guess, is less famous. So it just generated like uh, a random woman um, doing this. And so I had to be more specific and I said, Generate a photo of Kamala Harris, the vice president, parachuting away from a burning plane while holding um, bogs of money. Another typo. But regardless, when it uh, it generated the image, it is Kamala Harris. It knew what she looks like. She's parachuting. She's holding a whole bunch of money, not bags of money in this, but holding money. And I'm sure if I got it to regenerate it, um, it could get closer to, uh, you know, closer to what I asked. Um, but regardless, again, it does the same thing where it's showing where it fixes my typo. So I've, I just right now, as we're talking, regenerated that prompt. Um, and now it's got her, it's definitely Kamala Harris. Um, she's got a parachute on her back. There's a flaming fire behind her. And now she actually has like big bags full of cash. So all this to say, you definitely can do politically charged, right? Trump crashing into a burning chemical fire, Kamala Harris parachuting out of a burning plane with money. Like all of the things that people will try are going to be tried so um and it's able to generate them and you definitely have to like you might have to play with it a little bit right like how i needed to um definitely test out the prompt twice to get one that actually looked like kamala harris but it's able to do it and so the other thing i want to say is it really is quite a good uh it is quite a high quality image you can use image upscalers too if you need because when i like really zoom in on this there's like definitely a little blur in the image so it's not like um super huge but the quality of the image is very good. Uh, you know, there's fingers being shown and it, the fingers look normal, not like some of these AI models with like crazy finger issues. Overall, the image looks like quite good. You could probably make it more photorealistic. You could probably do a bunch of things to it, but like the image is good. It's an ultra realistic image. And this is in contrast to, you know, if I did something similar to this coming out of, um, you know, chat GPT's mid journey, the number one thing, my assumption is that if I asked it to do this, the number one thing I, I you could expect is that probably it would decline to um, it would decline to create that. But beyond that, even if it did, it wouldn't probably be super uh, realistic of an image. So I just asked it to do it, ChatGPT, and it said I can't create images that depict real life individuals and scenarios that could be considered inappropriate, such as parachuting away from a burning plane while holding bags of money. However, I can help you create a different image concept to assist you. Uh, with something else let me know uh, how you'd like to proceed whatever so i think this is very interesting right because um you know this is uh essentially like it's quite political it's like we can't do some sort of political image that is a hypothetical bad situation i even tried to just ask kamala harris parachuting and um it was unable to to do that because it's a real life individual. I even tried to just get it to do a, a generic, <laughs> I just said, ultra realistic photo of Indian woman, the, the vice president parachuting away from burning plane. Again, it's not able to do that. Um, so my last try that I'll do is ultra realistic photo of Indian woman parachuting. Let me just, let me just do that and see if we're able to um, get it to just do the do the image um in any case it definitely kind of highlights that uh chat gpt it's it's not trying to do anything it's definitely trying not to do anything political it's trying not to step on anyone's toes whether that's probably right wing or left wing in the united states especially ahead of a an, um, an election season so i was able to get it to do an ultra realistic photo of an indian woman parachuting but um for those on youtube and i'll explain it otherwise it has the image. There's a woman. She's parachuting. You can see the ground below her, kind of her parachute. Um, 
everything's great. She's got, you know, five fingers, whatever. The thing that um, is bad about it is it's not an ultra realistic photo. Like you can, it kind of looks more like Pixar. You can tell this is not an actual person. Whereas if you go to like Grox, it looks like an actual photo. While it may not be like perfect, um, it, it looks like an actual, just like a picture that someone took with a camera versus ChatGPT's is cartoony. So I think for this reason, um, like myself personally, I use, and my team, we use a uh, chat GPT's model to do some of the thumbnails on our YouTube channel. And we kind of have these different prompts, but they always are kind of cartoony. So you'll probably notice we're going to have a, a big shift in quite the near future as we start shifting to using, I think we're just going to use Grok because I want ultra realistic images for our YouTube channel. And I'll probably have like a photo of myself that I put on, on top of them. So they're kind of just the background, but I want ultra realistic images. Um, and I think that this is this is the way to do it. It was it's to use Flux with uh, on Grok, and maybe there's Flux other places. Um, but overall, a very useful product. It's very high quality. Um, I know there's going to be a lot of controversy about the fact that you can generate political images. People are going to say there's political misinformation or you know whatever. Um, it'll be interested to see how that rolls out. I, I assume you know on Twitter itself, people are pretty good about adding community notes. So if someone does something fake and says this is a real photo of Biden throwing a brick at a uh, homeless man. Um, you definitely should have a community note below it that says this is an AI generated image. Biden never threw a brick at a homeless man. Um, that being said, you know, you can imagine there's tons of these and people are going to try to do, I don't know, whatever. There, there's going to be arguments around it. I personally, um, and I know everyone's got their own opinion, but I personally am one for more open source, less um, guardrails on it. Like, I don't like having an AI model tell me it can't generate an image because it's unsafe or it's you know they don't want to do some sort of political thing like if i asked it for it i would just want it um but that's just me i know there's different people on on both sides of this argument so it's very interesting but you know all to say this model is uh, publicly available on grok right now it is very good it's very high quality i mean better than what i'm seeing from dolly but i think also dolly's a little bit nerfed because um they take your prompt and they like they change it um, and it looks like, I mean, technically Grok is kind of doing that too, but Grok, the prompt that it changed it into was way more similar than Dolly. I've done whole reports on this in the past, but Dolly really like takes your prompt and rewrites the whole thing. And it comes out with something kind of cartoony that it makes it really hard to make it ultra realistic. They're probably trying to avoid like deep fake being blamed on them, but in all, like all in all, it's just not super usable for me for most things I'm doing. And like we've gotten by using it just because mid journey was a little bit more complicated for our um for our production team but i think now that grok is super easy and available that's probably just what we're gonna go stick to so in any case very interesting let me know if this is a tool that you have used or if you're going to be using i'd be curious to hear your opinions on this as you know i'm always all ears and this is definitely an evolving situation to see where this goes i'm just trying to bring you the news as soon as possible but hope that you all have an amazing rest of your day